Howdy! It's Tubal Cain again, and some of you may have watched a recent video where I purchased this Delta 15 inch variable speed drill press, and I told you there were several things I needed to do on it. Well, I've already rewired it with brand new, fresh rubber wire, high quality, three conductor, so it's fully grounded. And in addition, I need to work on this dial up here, but that's still on the back burner while I deal with the feed handle here. So that's the project for today. I talked about this in the other video and I just don't like the idea that I've got one handle here. I really want three or four, but actually I'm going to do three. And this is semi well built in that you can raise and lower this and there's a mechanism here that allows you to change the orientation of it as well. But even that is not going to satisfy old tubal cane, so off comes this. I intend to build a new hub here that will hold three handles. Remember I talked about good, better, and best? Well, four is best, and this was only good, so I'm going to build better, which is three handles. So I've made a preliminary sketch, and I plan to build this hub uh, about to the dimensions that you see here. And it is bored out inch and a quarter, and then it will be pinned to the shaft or the pinion on the drill press itself, rather than a set screw. So starting with a slug of two and three quarter inch aluminum, I'm going to go ahead and uh, face that off, clean it up a little bit, turn it down to that diameter that I just showed you, which is about uh, one and a one and seven eighths diameter and one inch long and then I'm going to bore it from this end and then cut it off reverse it and put that taper on the other end so that's the game plan for today so this is really what I'm making a hub with the three handles on it and this is on my other Delta 15 inch drill press and this is what I really want and the hub will be fabricated from this aluminum, two and three quarters. And here we go.
I think I got a pretty good fit. This is a test plug, inch and a quarter. That ought to do. Okay, good fit. I'm going to cut it off to length. At this point, it looks something like this. Matter of fact, it looks exactly like this. Now, what I need to do next is to drill three holes and tap them 7 16 20, that's fine thread. And of course, they're going to be drilled at a 15 degree angle. Well, how the heck do you do that? Well, I got it all planned out, but. Uh, You'll see when I return tomorrow, I've been working eight hours today. Not on this. This is about two hours work at to this point. But I got to quit. It's uh, supper time and tackle it tomorrow with renewed vigor. See you then. Good morning. It's Tubal Cain again and it's the next day. And I'm continuing on this project, and this morning I'm going to drill the three holes in here at 15 degrees and tap them. That'll be done on the Bridgeport Mill using the little hardinge dividing head to divide this into three. So let's get started and uh, see how I'm going to do this. Here I am at the Bridgeport Mill, and the setup time for a job like this far exceeds the actual machining time. So again, I'm going to divide this into three parts. The hardinge dividing head, index head, has a 4 to 1 ratio. That is, four turns of the crank turns the spindle one time. Most of these are 40 to 1, so that's a little bit different. I've already taken the crank off and the plates, which is no easy job, by the way. And I have to select a plate that is applicable to this job. So the math is simple enough. The number that we're going to divide is 3. And with a 4 to 1 ratio, we're just doing a little division there. And we can see that for each hole, we need to turn the crank 1.333 times, which is 1 and 1 third. Well, there is no set of holes or plate with a set of holes with uh, just three. So I need to multiply by three and find a set of holes that is probably the easiest to use. And looking at this particular plate, which is the plate with the smallest number of holes, you're going to see, or are you? Yeah, there's the numbers right there. And I'm going to use the bottom ring of holes, which is 15. I'm not even sure you can read that. So for each uh, hole that I drill, I will move five holes, or should I say five spaces. So I've marked them. One full turn, and I'll drill with the plunger in this hole. Then I'll drill the next hole by moving one full turn and to the next mark. 
and then similarly on the third one one full to turn and to this mark so now I'll go ahead and install the plate on here and the crank and a few other things and we're ready to drill okay that took me a full half hour to change that plate and the reason was I dropped that little woodruff key which is the tiniest thing I never could find it and I finally said grow up and I got out the selection here and put in a new one which is usually my rule especially when you drop a spring don't even look for it you're wasting your time if you even spend 10 seconds looking for a spring that you drop anyway that's sideline <laughs> Here's how it works. I will drill a hole and notice that I got the spider here. Some of you call it a sector set at what was it? Five holes. That's the 15 hole circle that I'm using, the innermost circle. Drill one hole and then I will turn one full turn and then go to the next hole. And I've also uh, marked that with a magic marker. I always do that. I, I circle the holes that I'm going to use because this is so subject to error. Now I've used this little dividing head many times in other videos and I'm not fully explaining everything because I think you know now or I hope you know from watching my other videos what it does. It just simply divides a circle into any possible number of parts that you need to divide it in, such as mainly for gears. This dividing head can be tilted, so I have set it at 15 degrees. There's a protractor here, and in this case here, there are one, two, three, four cap screws that I have tightened securely. Not that there'll be much pressure on this. The work is mounted in a three-jaw chuck. This also holds 5C collets, but this being too large to fit into a 5C collet, so I'm using the three-jaw chuck. And I like to start in the up position here, 12 o'clock position. Move the sector like that. And always turning clockwise and never going past the hole because there is always backlash. Again, not that it matters on this, but it would really matter on a gear. Now with the head tilted like this, I'll have to drop the bridgeboard table quite a bit here to allow for my chuck and for my tooling. So that's what I'll do next is get the tooling out and remember I need to find a center drill, tap drill size for 7 16 20 and the tap itself. I'd like to tap it in here so I get the hole straight. I need to locate the work in the y-axis pretty accurately so I took the work back out. I put a center in there and this is a wiggler and this is going to be plenty accurate. Notice how beat up this hardened chuck is. That's because it came from a high school. Not that things don't get beat up in factories. Then I can move it back and forth until I get it right where I want it. And then I will, uh, using, using my digital readout, zero it out and lock the table in the Y axis. And now looking at it from this direction I need to locate the spindle in the middle of the flat here and I've laid that out so it would be 3 8 from the end that's located and I will lock the Bridgeport table in the X axis and zero out the DRO in the x-axis. I like to lay out my tooling and I need a 24, 25 64th drill for the 7 16 20 tap. So I'm going to use a starter drill and a stubby 
2564s. I love my stubby bits. Now the reason I'm not using my favorite Albrecht chuck is that it just is such a long chuck in comparison with uh, this 3 8 chuck. So that's my weapon of choice. And I'm going to do something a little different here since it's so easy to index this. I'm going to go all the way around and spot the holes then go all the way around, that is all three holes, drill this size, 9 16 deep, and then finally power tap them because I'm going to have to slow the bridge port down for that and I don't want to have to change the speed, the spindle speed, three times with my standard J head. If you've never done this before, I recommend a practice run that is a rehearsal. And I already did that even though I'm 74 years old. I always do a practice run because no sense spoiling the work that I spent hours both making and filming. So here we go. That's a starter drill. Could be a center drill if you want. with the 25 64 bit and I've set the depth stop now I'm ready to tap and this is a 7 16 20 taper tap and I do not want to hit the bottom of the hole I'm in back gear slow speed 80 rpm I just want to go in there up to the little black mark and get the hole started straight and I'm going to tap them with a bottoming tap in the bench by hand And I'll do all three that way. I think I'll go ahead and tap them with the bottoming tap while it's in the dividing head here simply because it's a good way to hold it. I'll do all three like that. A quick test fit before I take it out. I'll Loctite all of these in eventually. Alright, over to the bench. And we'll see what the next step is. In my scrap box, I had two of these. And I don't know where they came from. Whether they are off of a drill press, but they're the right size, they're the right thread. There was a third one, but it was quite stubby. But I can use the knob, also 7 16 Now I'm, I don't know what's the matter with me, but I'm highly reluctant to destroy any original equipment. I could very well cut this off to length and thread it, save myself a little time, and uh, there I go. But I would like to, for some unknown reason, keep this so that the machine can be converted back to its original state 
although at my auction no doubt this will get lost and separated and thrown in the junk but this uh, 7 16 rod here will be very easy for me to thread cut it off the length thread it 7 16 20 and I'll have my third however one will be cold roll steel one chrome plated and one plated more dull perhaps cadmium but so we'll have three different <laughs> handles okay closing lathe low speed back gear 7 16 20 die plenty of cutting oil let's see if this works to the layout line. Slicker than a whistle. Now I'll do the other end off camera. There it is so far. All I have to do is pin it to the shaft. I'm reasonably satisfied. And Loctite these threads in. Which is something they should do at the factory. Because I've had to do that to virtually every machine I've ever owned. Loctite. I have to drill this hole with a hand drill and that's always risky. The hole ends up oversized and certainly off-center, so I've devised a bit of a jig here, although it, maybe it's overkill, and ultimately that'll be a 7 seconds hardened pin going through there. I didn't want this cross hole to interfere with the end hole here, so I've allowed for that. And what I've done here is I've already got a pilot hole drilled there, and I did that on the milling machine so that it would be centered. But as long as I was doing that, I made this bushing. Well, the reason that I am leery about this, when I go in there with a hand drill and start drilling, you know darn well that this is going to wallow out a little bit, oversize and then off-center. So I'll have an elliptical hole, which of course will end up uh, in this area as well because the wall is so thin now if the wall was thicker here I wouldn't worry about that so what I've done is make it made a thicker wall by this and I wasted 15 minutes doing this but the idea here is that when I drill now with the hand drill and I'm not going to show that that this extra thickness will help support the drill and uh, I've got to go all the way through the steel now and through the back side. So we're going to see how that works and I hope it works all right. I'm using my Black & Decker hole gun, one of the finest drills ever made, old school, with a cord. This is a 3 16 bit. It seems like a bit of a contradiction or anachronism or whatever the word might be to have to use an electric drill in repairing a drill press. Anyway, the hole is complete. I know this is all overkill, but this is a 13 64 drill, the one prior to 736 ream. I've got a 3 16 drill bit in the back that is aligning the holes. It'll get pushed out by this one. I hope. Now 
it's ready to ream. And this is a 732nd reamer. Chucking reamer. I didn't have any 732nds hardened pins, so this extra long Cleveland drill bit became the donor because it had a longer shank than what you'd find on a jobber's length drill. Using my Vaughn hammer. And before I drive it home, I'm going to put a singular drop of Loctite just on the one end so that if I ever need to get it out, it's not really in there for life. And a drop of thread lock on each one of these. From this to this and completion, the way it should have been shipped from the factory to start with, shame on you Delta Rockwell. And I hope I get a lot of use out of this thing. And hopefully you'll see this in one of the next videos if I get around to it when I start on the needle business up here at the top with the variable speed drive. So. Hope you enjoyed this video, and even though you'll probably never do something like this, many of the operations that I showed you, I think, are applicable to other jobs. This is Tubal Cain saying so long for now. Watch my other videos, and I'll see you very soon.